Hi guys and welcome to another video on my channel. Today video we're gonna learn how to build an inverter like this one. So without further ado, let's crank on. I start with this project as soon as I get my hands on these batteries. So I start searching online for an inverter schematic and I spotted this EGS002 board, which is easy to get hands on in. And next step was to find the data sheet and to understand more about how this board works for my surprise on the datasheet was attached a schematic with a normal 50 hz transformer so i built the prototype one following the schematic diagram and i powered it with one of my battery and i was getting 7.5 volts for the primary winding and on the secondary winding i was getting 223 volts and 50 hz per scene wave and i start modifying the schematic using easy Edda to add 4 MOSFETs in parallel on the place of 1 and then I designed my own PCB for this project as well then I place an order on GLC PCB uploading the Gerber file and to give a cool look to the board I selected the purple color and after 2 weeks of waiting I received this pack and inside the pack there was my PCBs so I start gathering all the components on this project box the EGS002, insulators and M3 bolts, pin connector, a 3.3 microfarads 275 VAC, 4.7 ohms resistors, some fuses, diodes, 10k resistors, a trim port, the MTC, 47 nanofarad capacitor, few electrolytic capacitors, voltage regulators, 16 MOSFETs and a TIP41 transistor and I was about to forget the transformer. Next I opened the sealed bag from my PCBs and I inspected one of the PCB to make sure it's all how I designed it. Then I start applying double sided tape on the heatsink in order to fix my PCB in place and with the sharp tool I sign all the holes for all MOSFETs, transistor and voltage regulators. After that I use the center tap tool to mark proper the holes then with a 2.5 mil drill bit and using my press drilling machine I drill all 19 holes after I use the M3 tap threading tool and I start doing the thread to all 19 holes also if the tool snap it during this process so now was the time to apply some thermal paste on the heatsink that will help to dissipate better the heat from the MOSFETs. Then I used 19 thermal insulator pads to make sure will not be any short between all the MOSFETs, voltage regulators and transistor. I prepared all the bolts with insulator washers as well. Also prepared the 16 MOSFETs, the voltage regulators and the NPN transistor. Then I apply thermal paste to all MOSFETs, voltage regulator and transistor and I start installing them on the heatsink using the bolts with insulator washers to tie them down. Also I applied an insulator tape on the bottom of the heatsink to avoid any short between heatsink and PCB and then I took the PCB and start soldering some thick wires to the traces where we'll run lots of current to make sure can handle at least 50 amps. And this is how the PCB look after I soldered all the thick wires on the PCB. So now was the time to insert all the pins of these MOSFETs onto the PCB and just give some soldering points in order to keep the same gap between PCB and the heatsink. After making sure I get the same gap between PCB and the heatsink, I start soldering all the pins of these MOSFETs transistor voltage regulators. And this is how it looks with all the MOSFETs, transistor and voltage regulators soldered in place. Looks nice, right? Next step was to measure all the MOSFETs, transistor and voltage regulators in continuity mode to make sure I don't have any short to the heatsink. And I move on to solder the 10A WG wires to the PCB, the one for the powering the board and the ones that connect the primary of the transformer. Then I prepared all 16 pieces 10K resistors and one by one insert them on the board. Next I prepared the 16 pieces 4.7 ohm resistors and using the same process one by one insert them on the PCB. Next was all the diodes and I start with the 1N4148 diodes and one by one insert them on the PCB and finishing with the 1N4007 diodes. So it's time to insert the two pieces 100k resistors, the 10k trim port, those are part of the voltage feedback. Then the 2.2k resistor 
which drive the base of the NPN transistor and start solder all these components on the board. Then I chop it down all the excess pin from all the small components and now was the time for the capacitors. Starting with the 47 nanofarads and with all the electrolytic capacitor I soldered them on the PCB as well. And for the last was the big chunk 3.3 microfarad capacitors to be soldered in place. I was missing shunt resistor because I didn't receive it yet on the day I start soldering all the components in place. So I used a piece of wire to simulate the shunt resistor in order to test this inverter. And finally adding the EGS002 board to my PCB, connecting also the primary and secondary windings from the transformer, I was ready for the first test. So I connected the multimeter on the output of the transformer and powering from my power supply for my surprise didn't blow up. But I was getting only 151 volts AC on the output so I needed to turn the trim port to set the output to about 230 volts AC. Then I used a 7 watt 200 VAC bulb plus 11 watt 240 VAC and also a fan that I don't know how many watt is to test under the load my inverter. And using the power meter which I received in one of my mailbag video and connecting the bulbs and the fan together, let's see if my inverter will manage to power them on. I connected also the multimeter to keep an eye if the output voltage stays stable. Setting my power supply to 15.3 volts because the batteries I have are 4 cells, I powered the inverter and for my surprise also with the load didn't blow up and was 40 watt power draw. So this means the fan is 22 watt and looks like also under the load the voltage is stable. Looking also to the waveform under the load, looks pretty decent, so this inverter really performed good. And to make sure that I can use these batteries on my working bench, I did a test powering a 240 VAC 65 watt soldering iron, and looks like it's doing well, managed to melt the soldering wire. So overall, I am happy with this inverter. And I hope you learned something about inverter in how to build one. And if you need the Gerber file of this PCB board and the schematic, please leave your comment down below and I'm going to be more than happy to share with you the Gerber file of the PCB and the schematic. And stay tuned, please subscribe, activate the notification bell because once I'm going to receive the shunt resistor and the fan, I'm going to start designing uh, an enclosure and I'm going to put all together on the box and I'm going to do another test with the proper load to, the, to see the maximum power that this inverter can deliver. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and until the next video guys, bye bye and have a good day. Bye.